All right, what's up everybody? This is Brad Dahlke. Um, thank you again for watching another video of mine. Please make sure to go subscribe, hit that button right now if you can, that would help out a ton and it would be much appreciated. Make sure you leave a like and a comment too. Um, love seeing your comments and what y'all have to say about the video and uh, yeah, let's get into it. So first of all, it is 4th of July tonight. Obviously I am not doing any festivities tonight. Um, I was at the lake the last few days with my parents and some of my other family. So I already had a couple fireworks shows that I witnessed and um, had a great weekend. It was a lot of fun. It was fun to be able to spend time with the family. So I just wanted to say that in case you hear some, you know, booms in the background. There's just fireworks going on right now. It's going all over the place. Yeah, also my uh, face got nice and nice and burnt today. Um, went and practiced a little bit and then went to hang out by the pool with some buddies. And um, yeah, I can tell my face definitely got a little red and um, my chest is gonna be very, very sunburnt tomorrow. But um, it's all right, I'll get through it, we'll, uh, we'll live. Um, so I just wanna make this video today to explain um, my seventh hole in one. It was a crazy experience, it was fun. There's some details I wanted to give you all and um, and also I wanted to explain about the possible prize that could be happening, not sure yet. So uh, let's get it right into it. <clears throat> so the event I played in uh, that day was on June 26th. It was the Drew Neville Charity Golf Classic and it benefited the Children's Health Foundation, which helps supply medical care to children. Um, this one was children in Oklahoma and it was a great cause and I was so happy to play in it. I actually left the, um, the Good Good Week in Chicago early to be able to come back down to Oklahoma and play in it. It's my home course, Oak Tree National. Um, and it was uh, just a no brainer when they invited me that I wanted to go play, help out. So in this event, I was the celebrity in the group. I uh, played with four other amateurs. One of the amateurs had a son named Gavin Kaikadol, and he's gone through a lot of problems in the past with his heart. He's had a heart transplant, he's had open heart surgery, and he's only 16 years old, I think he was. And he uh, he got to play with us, and that was, that was a lot of fun. It's crazy how much he's gone through, and he's still playing baseball. He had to leave the round early, actually, to go catch a baseball game that he was playing in that night, and it was really cool just to hear his story and see that he's doing so well after going through so much as a young kid. It just makes me really grateful that, you know, I'm healthy. Cool to hear his story. I love seeing him do well and I'm definitely going to be following along in his journey and rooting for him. Very good event for a very good cause that I was playing in. So that morning, teed off at I think 9 a.m. is where our tea time was and I started on hole number three. So the first few holes, we weren't playing great. We were, we were hitting greens, just not making any putts. It was a five, five man scramble. And Oak Tree, first of all, is one of the toughest courses in the nation. I think the course rating is 79 point something. Just miserably tough, especially when the rough is long, wind is blowing, all that. And so they redid their greens about a year ago and they have really firm greens and even four man scramble was not the easiest that day. There were some pins that we were like, wow, we have no chance to get this within 30 feet because the greens are so firm and um, had to make a lot of putts from that 15 to 30 foot range. So um, it wasn't your scramble that someone's gonna go shoot 23 under, 22 under because because it's an easy course. That's just was not gonna happen that day. So I think we were three or four under going into number eight. I'd have to go back and look at the scorecard on it, but number eight, and it's 180 yards on the dot, downwind, pin is all the way in the back. The, the green is a very long green. So my plan was to land it. It was, the pin was probably about, if I had to guess, 30 to 32 paces on. I'm not sure exactly how long that green is, but I would guess it's about 30, 30 yards from the front of the green to the pin. And downwind, I wanted to land a ball about 155 or so. That was my goal because the greens are so firm, it was gonna take a huge hop and then roll a long way back there. So I had a pitching wedge. Pitching wedge is about my 145 to 150 club, so it was a little downwind. I thought a nice solid pitching wedge would land where I wanted to, and if I hit it right, if I hit it the right trajectory, then it would take a big bounce, roll on back there, hopefully get close. So we get up there and Gavin, the 16 year old, was talking the whole time about how he wanted his dad to uh, to make a hole one in that hole because there was a truck. You could win a truck. Um, it was a GMC AT4, I think is what the truck was. So the whole time leading up, the first five holes or whatever it was, he kept telling his dad, like, you gotta, you gotta get me that truck. You gotta make a hole one to get me that truck. And it was just kind of funny. Like, obviously it's 
probably not gonna happen, but you know, he's kind of joking about it. So we get to that hole. Uh, I bring pitching wedge nine iron, I think, up there. End up hitting the pitching wedge, like I said. And I went first, and I hit this just beautiful, tight little draw up there. And it's going right at the hole. Um, it lands right where I want it to, about three or four paces on. And it took this big hop a little bit to the left. And it's probably rolling, we see, obviously see it rolling the entire time. It's probably rolling the whole time about four or five feet left of the hole. And then it starts turning back right. And the whole time I'm watching it super closely. <laughs> like, I think this thing is literally going in. And um, I wasn't really expecting it to go in. Well, you kind of have to expect the worst, hope for the best. And it ended up dropping. And it was crazy. It, it for we, I didn't run up to the green or anything. First of all, I was just kind of in shock for a second. Um, I think our whole group was in shock. Like we were just kind of standing there like looking at each other <laughs> the whole time. And then after about a second or two, we started going nuts, screaming. Um, there's a group on number five green, which is right across the water. It's about 50 yards from the tee box. Um, that group had Josh Creel, who you might recognize. He uh, is on the Corn Ferry Tour right now. He's played on the PGA Tour before. And he was on five green. He starts going nuts. He's like, did you make it, Dalkey? I'm like, yeah. So we, we were celebrating. We were going wild. It took me about 30 seconds to realize, realize like, holy crap. Like, there's a truck right there. I might have just won a truck. The thing is, though, most tournaments like that will say that the celebrity or pro, whoever whoever's playing in that group, in a, in a pro-am in the PGA Tour tournament, you know, for example, or whatever it may be, pros aren't allowed to win the truck, or pros aren't allowed to win the prize, or whatever it may be for a hole in one. That's only for the amateurs that are the sponsors, or whoever is playing in that group besides the, the pro or the person invited to be out there. So at first I kind of assumed that I was not gonna be winning it, but then the, the, the man running the tournament, Jeremiah, he, came, he was actually on number five, I think, when it happened so he drove across real quick thing i asked him like i don't get the truck right you know there's no chance i'm you know i'm getting it i was you know invited to be out here like i'm not one of the amateurs i can't win this correct and he goes do you have status on any tour right now you know pj tour status corn ferry status pj tour canada status whatever it may be i said no i don't i don't have any status right now then he said well then you win the truck you're technically not a touring pro so you win the truck and all of a sudden I'm like, holy crap, I actually did. <laughs> and all the signs on the on the, um, on the the tee box, none of them said, you know, uh, pros or celebrities not eligible to win this prize or anything like that. It just said, you make it, you win this truck. I started going wild. Like I was like, the, the craziest thing is that two days before I, or I guess it was a day before and tried starting my car and it wouldn't start for about 10 minutes. First time it's ever happened. I I'd never, if, like first, well I've had troubles with my car in the past, but first troubles I've had with my car on actually just being able to get it to start. Finally got it to start, it's been working since, but um, it was crazy the day before that happened, the next day all of a sudden, you know, I'm, I'm winning a truck possibly. Yeah, it, it was a wild few minutes. We're sitting there deliberating, like do I win this? Do I not win this? The amateurs in my group are just going wild. Like they're they're texting their buddies and, and taking pictures and all that and it was, just kind of mayhem for a few minutes. It was so much fun though. Um, my phone starts blowing up from my buddies uh, that were playing that day. They were texting me going, you know, Brad, did you just make a home one? You're the luckiest guy alive, blah, blah, blah. And I am pretty lucky when it comes to stuff like that. I took a couple, pi or I took a couple pictures in the truck, um, took a couple pictures once we get up to the green. Obviously I had to go make sure that there's my ball in the hole. You just kind of have to double check even though you know. I got a video taken of me uh, walking up to the green, getting my ball out of the hole. So uh, we can go ahead and show that clip real quick. Take a photo of me picking mine out of the sand. <laughs> <laughs> Man. There you go. Yeah. Woo! That was just such a cool moment. It was, uh, you know, making a hole in one is so much fun. That is my seventh hole in one I've ever made, and it does not get old at all. It does not get old. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a great time, and it, it was pretty weird or cool in a way just because because I hadn't just because I hadn't known these guys very well at all that I was playing with. I met them the night before actually but we didn't talk a whole lot the night before and then we'd only played five holes together so it's not like I'd gotten to know them all that well. Uh, we were still having a lot of fun before then but it was crazy to kind of have that moment with these four guys that I just didn't know that well. 
We still went wild though, and that just made our day. Like we were just sitting there going like, we don't care how the rest of the day goes. You made a home one, you want a truck, blah, blah, blah. We ended up uh, finishing the round 14 under as a team. Uh, no more home ones. I did almost make a 100 yard shot. I think it was 100 yards, 110 yards, whatever it may be. Um, almost made it on our last hole, number two. But other than that, not, not anything too crazy coming in. I think we ended up getting, we lost by three shots, I think. But I think we got around fourth or fifth, something like that. But super fun day with those guys. Also, I wanted to say, before the round, so I knew I needed to get my YouTube content up, just filming stuff, filming videos, filming rounds. And I almost brought my camera out there to film. At least just nine holes, or maybe all 18. Just try to get something, maybe get a cool shot, or just say, you know, I played the scramble, here you can watch my shots, whatever it may be. Last second, I decided like, you know, I don't know these guys. If, my, if I knew them, maybe I would, but I don't want to be a burden of like, having to carry a camera around and, and I just didn't want to do it. You know, I, I, I didn't want them to have a good time. I didn't want them to have to, you know, sit there and think as, you know, kind of a nuisance to have the camera around or onto the truck, kind of what a, the update is on that. So it's been eight days. It's been just over a week since I made that one one. And um, we are working on the truck. Uh, it has to go through insurance, obviously. And I don't want to say too much on, on all this, but uh, the dealership that was um, sponsoring the tournament, sponsoring that whole, um, they have to make a claim to the insurance company on, you know, obviously the insurance company paying for the lease. It's a three year lease, by the way, is what the, uh, what the deal is. And um, so they have to make a claim on the insurance paying for that three year lease. That's a process. It's not just a, you know, make a home one, get a truck, and you get to drive it off out of the parking lot. That's just not how it works. It's a process and um, first of all, just trying to get the truck in the first place might be a hassle just because the fact that yes, I am a pro golfer, but what do you define a pro golfer? Um, because the events I've been playing in are mini tour events, they're pay to play. Anybody could go play in the mini tour event, anybody. I'm not a touring pro, I'm not playing in events that other people can't play because they don't have status or whatever it may be. Um, so we're trying to figure out some details of like, does the contract say touring pro, does it say just pro? Um, so we're, we're, we're trying to figure out the details. Main thing is I do not for sure have the truck yet. I don't know if I will be getting the truck or working on it. I'm excited about it. I'm obviously just excited to have the chance to get it. You know, it'll be cool um, to have a three year lease on that bad boy. It's a, it's a pretty cool truck and I've never really had a car um, that nice before. You know, I'm not necessarily a person that's into the super nice things. I, you know, I have a Hyundai Elantra right now and I'm perfectly fine with it. Um, but it'd be kind of cool just to have that for three years and, and get to drive that thing around. So it was an awesome, awesome experience. I wish I had gotten it on video. I really do. Um, it kills me that I did not film that day. I really wish I had. But anyways, thank you for watching. I really appreciate you watching this video. Um, thank you for letting me sit here just to explain to you um, my, my latest hole in one. It was an awesome day. And uh, I know you didn't see me golfing in this video necessarily, but um, I just wanted to sit here and talk about it since I wasn't able to get it on video. Make sure to subscribe, make sure to leave a like, make sure to leave a comment. Make sure to hit that notification bell too, please. That helps a lot. I'm just reminding you to come watch my videos whenever, uh, whenever I post a new one. And I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Peace.